Welcome back everyone, it is me, Matmus. I really appreciate you being on today's video. We are talking about tanks today, and in particular, as you can see, the beautiful M1 Abrams and its overall packages that have been provided today. Now, the Abrams has been around for quite some time. It's an impressive piece of equipment. I've done many videos on it before. Many of you enjoy the tank. I myself think it's a fantastic main battle tank for the United States military and other militaries around the world. Really good bit of kit, but of course it has been around for some time and therefore really is in need of a lick of paint and some upgrades, just like other tank packages we see out there. I've done some videos recently on the Challenger 2 having its own upgrade package being placed on it, and you know, I would definitely say that the Abrams is leaps and bounds beyond, um, you know, the Challenger 2 in terms of upgrades and how it's been brought into the modern day era. The Abrams is packing some serious technology and modular upgrades for this platform. However, the US Army is preparing the M1A2 Abrams for its long-serving main battle tank to be fighting through into the 2020s with even more upgrades. The latest version of the tank, now designated the M1A2C, could well be one of the last upgrades for the Abrams until a replacement vehicle is fielded sometime in the next decade. Now this is very speculative, it's, it's hard to say whether or not we are going to see the Abrams completely replaced. Things change, politics change, militaries change, um, and I'm not going to get into that because remember I'm not a subject matter expert. However, um, as relations between certain other countries can deteriorate, it's difficult to say that tanks are just going to be left in the dark. You know. The modern day military structure changes all the time, but we'll always need tanks. For the United States military, of course, the Abrams is here to stay for quite some time, especially with, you know, European doctrine and tactics of tank on tank warfare kind of coming back into the play. In 1980, the army unveiled a new tank. It was a clean break from previous tanks. Totally unlike the previous generation M60 main battle tank, the M1 Abrams featured the sleek, angular features, top secret chop armour imported from my home country, the UK, that mixed ceramic and steel plates for superior protection, a powerful and fairly quiet gas turbine engine, the new survival features and a fire control system allowed for a 90% accuracy up to 2,000 metres. Very, very impressive, but as I said, that's not enough today. Since then, the Abrams have received a steady stream of upgrades meant to keep it ahead of the competition. In 1986, the tank received a large and more powerful 120mm German-engineered main gun, and in 1988, a layer of depleted uranium, 2.4 times denser than steel, was added to the armour to increase protection. These Cold War era upgrades were meant to ensure the Abrams could outshoot the latest Soviet tanks in World War III if it ever broke out. The end of the Cold War ended possibly of a superpower tank versus tank slugfest. There was no real requirement for tank on tank, you know, a capability so much anymore. But the M1's upgrades gave it a valuable edge in 1991 when the Abrams crushed the Iraqi army in Kuwait. The tanks then served obviously in other countries as well and have progressively been adding to their kill record and the service record they have very, very well deserved and been proud to deserve of doing so. The next set of upgrades was driven by the need to operate against guerrillas and, you know, guerrilla warfare, not actual guerrillas, and included a remote control 50 caliber machine gun. Since popping out of the turret to fire that machine gun mostly is just not very safe for you because snipers like to take out crew commanders and loaders on vehicles a lot. They also added explosive reactive armor meant to dissipate the shaped charge of a rocket propelled grenade and a telephone to the tank crew to communicate with nearby infantry, similar to that that we saw in the Vietnam era. The winding down of wars in Afghanistan and Iraq, along with deteriorating relations between certain countries in between NATO and other countries, and I think we know where we're going with this, means the army thinks that the next round of upgrades should really be orientated again towards big, powerful, full-size mechanized warfare. The round of upgrades to the Abrams tank includes this. Now, Russian forces have been very, very updating in their own vehicles with the T-14 Armada. I've done some videos on that in the past too, and it's interesting to see how tanks are started stepping away from the old and into the new kind of era, and I think eventually we're going to see the Americans potentially go that way too. The new Abrams tank, the M1A2C, formerly known under development as the M1A2 SEP V3, is now a system that is really being looked at by military commanders in the United States as the final upgrade package. And as I said, things can change, but it's potentially going to be the ma last major upgrade we see for the, uh, for the Abrams. One of the new interesting developments are the ammunition data link system that allows the tank crew to set a distance for a tank shell to explode, ensuring it detonates inside a building instead of sailing right through it. Now this isn't really new technology, but applying it into tanks is very interesting. By making sure the shell goes where it's supposed to go, it lessens the likelihood of the shell flying on, possibly inflicting casualties on civilians or infrastructure. The C model also features even better infrared sights. 
a low-slung, remotely operated 50 caliber machine gun for the tank commander, and an auxiliary power unit that's being upgraded in power and versatility. The APU obviously allows the tank to power communications and sensors, monitoring the battlefield without running its powerful and beautiful gas turbine engine, notorious for burning gallons and gallons of gas per mile, and obviously getting extremely hot, enough to actually barbecue steaks off its lower louvers like so. And while that's a really neat party trick, it also presents a very juicy target for any enemy infrared sensors and heat-seeking guided missiles launching its way, which as I've done many videos on in the past, anti-tank guided missiles is really the biggest bane to any tank crew out there. One of the most important sea upgrades is a new active protection system, meant to defeat enemy anti-tank weapons which I just mentioned. Now there is a photo of an M1 Abrams reportedly taken at the Yuma Proving Grounds in Arizona that's been circling around on social media for quite some time. The photo is rumoured to be the finalised version of the M1A2C, though its authenticity couldn't really be independently confirmed from myself, and it's hard to say whether or not it's a legitimate actual active protection system with the trophy, but it looks pretty predominant from this picture, I think we can safely agree. But to me, this is really interesting news, because this is what all tank designers are going for now. Active protection systems are the future, I think they're going to get more and more. I've done videos on this on the past, I'm probably going to do more dedicated videos on active protection protective systems for tanks in the future for sure. But this is definitely something I think the United States military is taking very seriously, as have other militaries around the world, including obviously with the Challenger 2 Black Knight program. Lots of different things going on with active protection system around the world. Interestingly, the photo also shows what appears to be the M1 SA2 SCP series tank with a low profile version of the Crows machine gun turret. The SCP tanks are quite hard to differentiate, but the low-profile Crow's turret makes it at least a V3. This is rather big upgrade because the V3 package is obviously trying to upgrade even its own standalone weapon system that it already had. Now, the trophy system that you can see bolted on the side, the green system, is an active or hard kill protection system which were originally developed by Israel consisting of a ring of sensors, typically radar, circling the tank capable of detecting and tracking incoming anti-tank projectiles. It's a soft kill weapon system by contrast and usually involves interfering with the missile's guidance system or luring them off target. Once the incoming projectile, such as an RPG or an anti-tank missile, is within range, the targeted uh, tank can actually launch projectiles of its own and shoot it down. Now, there is videos out there of the trophy system. I would highly recommend you check that out. The active protection is a really, really big key changer to uh, how tanks work on the battlefield today. Destroying those incoming rockets is imperative and they provide that 360 degree protection. Um, it's especially useful for protecting the tank's vulnerable flanks and rear, which are the weaker points of the tank, obviously. The trophy system weighs about 1,807 pounds. Now, you'd think that's pretty heavy. Well, yeah, that is, but think about what you're protecting with that amount of weight and added you know, protection. It's about as much as a Volkswagen Beetle, but spare change to a tank that weighs nearly 70 tons already, fueled up and ready to go. Now, the Army has been experimenting with the trophy on Abrams for a few years now. In 2017, Colonel Glenn Dean, a project manager of the Army's Redstone Arsenal, told us that, uh, that you know, the tanks were 48 times tested and it failed every single time. Um, so, therefore, that the system is very, very effective in what it does. And in 2018, the Army pronounced plans to purchase 261 of these sets, enough to fit at least three armored brigades. And I'm sure the uh, M1A2C will definitely be equipped with this as soon as possible. So what do the Abrams adversaries look like? I mean, we, we know that these upgrades are being put onto the tank, but primarily we're looking at obviously, you know, more Eastern um, nation tanks, you know, T-90s, uh, T-14s, all that sort of stuff. But the Abrams should, for now, be fairly on top of the ball for being able to, you know, take on these challenges. And I like seeing these upgrade packages because the more and more they bring out, you're seeing that they're trying to counter a threat. And it's almost like a, a Cold War um, setup again. You know, we build a weapon, we'll build a weapon that's better. It's back and forth, back and forth. I really don't see the Abrams having, you know, this uh, major challenge against other tanks out there. You know, it's a pretty formidable main battle tank. A lot of people have been asking, you know, when are we going to get the bigger 125mm gun in there with that beautiful big old barrel? You know, I don't think we're quite there yet, and I think that's something we'll probably look at 
um, you know, the replacement. The army actually plans to announce the M1 Abrams long-awaited replacement in 2023, which isn't too far away, with production beginning what they're saying is in 2025. The new vehicle may not be available in large numbers right immediately away, so in the meantime, upgrading these beautiful old M1A2s to the C and potentially even if they're going to make a, you know, stopgap D variant, will be an easy and risk-free way of keeping America's tanks refreshed with the latest technologies and fighting ready. The M1 will almost certainly serve for 50 years in a career spanning multiple wars and two centuries, and to this day I still have a tear to my eye every time I see one because they are just an amazing and powerful piece of military engineering, and I'm very, uh, very impressed by it overall in its history and just the way it operates. The amount of people I've spoke to have used these tanks in the past and just said they're absolutely outstanding goes to prove that uh, they're doing the right things. And that's not saying it's the best tank in the world. That's clearly not what I'm trying to get here. A lot of people say, Matt, what's the best tank? What's your favorite tank in the world, etc., etc. It's not what I'm really trying to get here, but I just want to give you a little bit of an informative overview of exactly what sort of things is going on for the news of the Abrams. Because, you know, my channel does talk about a lot of tank information, and I love to talk about, you know, anything that involves main battle tanks because they're just amazing. I hope you enjoyed today's video, folks. If you did enjoy it, I would really ask that you subscribe to my channel hit that little bell button by the subscribe button. The reason for this is many people have not been notified of my videos coming out. I've also recently transitioned onto Twitch, which is a streaming software if you've never used it before, to um, do any kind of live streams that I've been doing. If you want to interact with me, have a chat. I do a lot of chatting sessions. We're going to be doing a podcast in the future, so stay tuned for that. It's going to be super exciting. We're going to transfer all of that onto the Twitch platform um, and stepping away from YouTube a little bit uh, due to the fact that I'm still being kind of put in the naughty house by them and I'm just kind of sick of it now so we're going to go to Twitch a little bit um, and hang out on there and hopefully that'll be able to give me a little bit more bandwidth to interact with you folks and, and, and hang out and chat and all that good stuff um, come hang out on my discord everyone the discord channel is a chat server if you've never used it before um, it's primarily used for sort of just discussing things it's a text server also so we can kind of chat back and forth if you have any questions you have for me on the channel or whatever it may be come have a discussion with me obviously I have Facebook and if you want to support my channel in any way shape or form I do have Patreon in the link dis uh, description box below and also I have um, my merchandise store so if you want to go check that out you're more than welcome to and I have my P.O. Box. If you want to send me any fan mail, which we just did a video on. Some people sent me some rather interesting products. So thank you again for that. And thank you to all those Patreon supporters who have been supporting me. All the best, folks. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.